So we're coming into port, Key West, and it's uh, a little cloudy, but still a very nice day. We were hoping to do a little snorkeling while we were here, but it was a little too chilly, kind of rainy, so we decided just to shop all day. We didn't have anything really planned. We were just gonna hit the, the beach. I don't know what the park was called. We'll put in the script. This is us leaving the thingamajigger at Key West. Getting ready to go get some tickets for the comp train. A little tour they do. Uh, you can buy your tickets at these little shacks right when you get off the, the ship. You can also buy it as, as an excursion through Carnival. I think the comp train was 20 bucks. shops when you first get off the ship. We didn't go in a single shop here. You can tell they're overpriced. But nice. Unless you want name brand stuff, this is not the area of Key West I would shop in. Over to the left is the art museum. Lots of sculptures out in front. Red brick building is a nice little marker to know where your uh, ship is docked. We were docked in the port at Mallory Square. This is the comp train. It's pretty neat. This is the beginning of the good shopping. On the right side of the street, there's a couple $5 stores. Um, there's lots of good deals scattered throughout Key West. Interesting deal. A lot of shirts that have stuff on them, but you're actually buying the shirt for $5 and then the, the iron-on decal for another 5 or 10 or 15 so Or 30 it's, So it's a little shady, but some of them come with the decal on it. You have to ask. <laughs> oh, you're wanting a chicken? <laughs> Walked all the way down here for a chicken? I, I thought you were going to the ocean. <laughs> chicken in the street. We really liked the comp train tour. It was a good way to see the city, especially when you've never been before. The train takes you all over. It wasn't riveting by any means, but it was relaxing and cheap. We spent most of the time on Duval Street, so the conch train was a nice little getaway to take us around all of Key West almost, at least the important parts. And uh, the landmarks like the southernmost point. Uh, and then after that we, uh, we just shopped all day around Duval Street and then there's some side streets. I think the comp train took about an hour and a half to do round trip. We just stayed on the whole time, but there's two or three stops. Yeah, you want to stay on the whole time, get it over with, and then you can later go uh, wherever else you want to go. There's nothing really to see at the stops they let you off at anyway. Um, the only one was they let you off at like a little souvenir shop and it's got some food inside. So. We did get off there, but he stayed parked for you know 10 or 15 minutes to let everybody run in and buy some stuff. Um, so 
check that out, but I wouldn't get off and sightsee. It'll take another 20 or 30 minutes for another um, train to roll around. Ivan Rex in 1985 are brought up over $400 million worth of gold, silver, emeralds, and other artifacts. They are still actively diving those wrecks today and have brought up another $400 million worth. They're going to keep going. According to Ship's Manifest, the items still left on the bottom of the ocean worth nearly half a billion dollars. And the big white columns on the right are blank in the presidential gates, so named because they're only open for visiting U.S. presidents in the occasional art festival, I mean, huh? Through those gates, you'll find Harry Truman's little White House Museum. President Truman spent 175 days of his presidency here in Key West. Beautiful band entry on my left takes up these three front yards because it spreads through the aerial roots that are hanging down wherever those roots touch the ground or the tree itself, they will actually form a new trunk. Band entry is native to Madagascar, the largest member of the ficus family of trees. Front right corner, the white sign, Kelly slipping into Highway 1 North, the only road in and out of the Florida Keys, fortunately we don't have a lot of hurricane activity. Further down the post, the main square green sign with a zero, there used to be a mile zero sign there, there's still one on the other side of the street, we'll see later. There are over 3,500 buildings on our little island, over 10% of those are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. You'll see in here chickens all over the island, they are left over so the Cubans came to town with the sport of cockfighting. When that sport was outlawed in the early 1980s, Cubans let their birds go in protest. The chickens have done quite well for themselves. The only natural enemies they have are the occasional chicken, hawk, perhaps brave dog, or cat. They certainly don't have to worry about humans. That's because all of the Florida Keys is a national wildlife refuge and bird sanctuary. Chickens here in Key West are considered wild animals, so that means they are protected by federal, state, and local regulation. Great spot to read a book next door in the Palm Garden. 25 varieties of palm trees in there from around Florida and other parts of the Caribbean. As we make our way through Key West Historic District, you'll see a number of different styles of architecture. Many of the homes in this part of our island were built by ship's carpenters. They came from around the world with their own idea of what a home should look like. Instead of using conventional construction techniques with hammers and nails, they built their homes the same way they built their ships. Utilizing mortise and tenon joints, making their houses snug and trim like their ships, allowing for some sway and give in the high winds of tropical storms you can through through here. If you don't know what a conch is, it's a large snail-like sea creature of an empty shell from one here in my hand. Inside this shell is a very delicious animal. We'll make a lot of dishes with it. Conch ceviche, conch cheddar, conch fritters, conch steaks, conch salad, fried conch, crack conch, sauteed conch, if you like Forrest Gump when I do that. On my left, the beautiful white sands of Hayes Memorial Beach. That sand leaves is double. It's like the sand in all of our beaches. Not one grain of it actually comes from here because we have no surf to push the sand up onto the shore. We go by all that sand in a sand mine in Central Florida, bringing it back here by the truckload to replenish the beaches as needed. We have to do that because underneath all that sand is nothing more than hard coral stone. And I can assure you, it would be a little awkward for us to bring about our white sandy beaches if they didn't have any white sand on them. So that's why we have to keep bringing it in. So it has a train, a great view of the Atlantic Ocean. It looks a lot more like a lake than an ocean. Mostly because we don't have any surf. And that's because seven miles off our shoreline is the third longest barrier reef in the world. It goes from Miami all the way to Garden Key, which is 70 miles shore west. Mm. The reef breaks up all the surf. It never makes it to shore. It also used to bring up so many ships. We had a shipwreck industry here in Key West. Up here on my left, the big red, black, and yellow buoy represents the southernmost point of the continental United States. That buoy is 90 miles from Cuba, 157 miles from Miami. Coming up on my right, we get past the white picket fence. You're going to see the red brick wall that surrounds our Hemingway House Museum. Past the exotic palm trees on the right, you see the low white picket fence behind it. The Octagon House, technically a hexagon, also called the Birdcage House. It's coming up here right with the green shutters. That was floating as Vander Calvin Klein's vacation home in the 1980s, which does explain the small painted label on the back of the home. Very large front yard, all right, not a lot of those in Key West in our historic district. Next door to that on the corner of the coal colored house, the green shutters is the original Bahama house. Key West also one of the first Coca-Cola bottling plants in the U.S. anywhere outside the city of Atlanta, Georgia. It's called the Bottling Court. It's coming up here at the end of the block on my right. Yellow and green building. It was built in 1903. It was a bottling plant up until 1974. It was built 37 years before there was a water pipeline, so we put 400,000 gallons sister and underneath the building to gather rainwater to make Coca-Cola. Great idea. We made the tank too small, though. We have a dry season here. Once they ran out of rainwater, they couldn't make Coca-Cola again. It doesn't rain to fill up the tank. During that dry season, they take two to four months. As soon as they ran out of Coca-Cola during that time, they had their own unique hardship. They would have to have rum and rum instead of rum and coke. These are tough people. They got through the hard times. We didn't have a lot of time to spend in Key West. Uh, so if you have any ideas on where to go, if we head down there once more, uh, put them in the comments below. We'll be sure to check them out next time.